Ah, so uh, back out in the woods for a couple of reasons. Trying to give my left leg a little bit more into some exercise with a bit of a, uh, a pack with some weight in it. And uh, trying out the newest team member on the team, which is <laughs> the German short haired pointer. And she is awesome, every bit of it. She's a puppy. So we'll talk some more as we get closer to where we want to go. Uh, and the tree is down. That's pretty cool. I'm going to take a look at that one. I wonder how I got all the way out here in the middle like that. Looks like the bay's Uh, so, well, that's the root right there. Hey, that's the root right there. <laughs> I know it, I know. I mean, was it drug all the way over here? Because that's the closest hole that I see right here in this spot. Another tree wasn't growing in the road right here. So, did it just uproot from over there and leap 15 feet? Was it drug over? I would have thought if a person would have done it, they would have cut it up with a chainsaw. And oh boy, the river is still up, which is pretty amazing. I just don't think we've had that much rain to justify it being flooded. You know, so we can't get to the, where the rocks are and where I was wanting to sit down and have a discussion because it's, it's just all underwater right here. Is that an alligator? No, that's just something floating in. So... That's what it looks like. It's completely underwater and flooded. Let's give the dog a little bit of water. Her name is Indy, by the way. And that's what Indy looks like. God is going to get her some water so she can drink some clean water. She's a purebred. Comes from a, a breeder in Georgia. And we're just training her up little by little. See how she's gonna be if we decide we wanna carry her on the trail from time to time. Yep. Come on. Come here. And Beata has some experience with pointers as a child. She grew up with a pointer. Here you go, sit. Yeah. So I love hearing this dog's name. And when you guys hear this dog's name that Beata had a dog when they were grunt, oh. you would tell them, you tell, know? Tell, tell, tell them. What her name was? This is going to be good. Y'all love this name. What the, okay. the, this dog had a title and a name and everything. Okay, okay. The, the dog's name was Arno von der Fächerstadt. Okay. <laughs> All right, one more time. Arno von der Fächerstadt. Well, which translation, what does that mean? Arno from uh, the Fächer city. Yeah, the city so, of of fe of um, Fecha. Fecha means oh boy, you know when the you open up something fans, you know you know like a fan like that, the one that you can open up. So this guy compared to Anno, or this girl compared to Anno is uh, they're about the same. No, Anno was older, so uh, this is Indy is just three months old. So she is really two handfuls right now. Puppy big time. Puppy big time. Yeah, this dog will go into Cujo mode like 10 minutes every night like raptor, man. It's like it's like living with a raptor. She just non-stop everywhere, everywhere. But 
good dog. We're trying to see if she's going to be a viable team member here, but it's putting her in a little bit of training. So uh, you guys might see her more often. Uh, the ability of a canine, the ability of a canine to tip you off on stuff uh, can be of benefit big time. So that's what our river looks like right now. Completely underwater. So check this out. While we were walking, while we were walking in, and we're on this side of the swamp because there's hunting going on on the other side of the swamp. But as we was coming in, we saw four four vehicles parked on the side of the road. I uh, looked at Beata, I spoke to her briefly, I said, hmm, they look like they're setting up something to do with camping, although I don't think it's campers. They didn't look like campers to me. They didn't look like campers, they and didn't they, look, like they didn't look like hikers, because hikers don't usually hike in combat boots. They looked to me like they might be uh, Big some footers. Bigfooters, yeah. So, uh, as we all go through the School of Hard Knocks, it, I would think that it looks like it's going to be a, uh, a makeshift campsite. Yeah, a makeshift campsite, and they'll rig it up with cameras and everything like that, and audio recorders, and more power to you. But you better think a little deeper than that in the green swamp, because there's some shit out here in the green swamp that is all off the chain, off the chain. You better be deeper than thinking about. Uh, you know, I say that because, you know, we've we've tried it too. And it did yield some information when we did do uh, makeshift campsites and rig it up with them. It did work. It did yield us some information. Got knocks, had stuff thrown at the tent, stuff like that. So, um, you know, it'll give you information. If information is what you're looking for, you'll get that. They'll entertain we that. We can film it on the way out. Yeah, on the way out. So uh, maybe, uh, you know... The, the purpose is to train up Indy, of course, to get out. And the purpose is Go twofold. I want to be out in the woods because I just like being out in the woods. You know, we like being out in the woods and wilderness. Um, you know, getting my leg more stronger, strengthening it up. I'm on, a, I'm on 800 milligrams of motion right now, so I am on a painkiller still. Uh, obviously, the dog, you know, training her up. I would love the... I would love to take this dog out big footing with me up in the mountains and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's still puppy and she got to be a little bit more obedient. But getting back to the uh, the big footers, the suspect big footers. We're going to film a little bit on the way out. Um, yeah, I got a camera with me. They stared at me. They seemed to look like they didn't know who you know we were. Uh, and maybe that's truthful and correct. Um, or they just focused on the dog. Or they looked at the dog. Don't know. But there is a um, there's a there's a Bigfoot conference going on in January. In January here in Lakeland, Florida, there's a Bigfoot conference going on, and maybe that's what spurred some some stuff to be going on from people to be hitting the green swamp a little bit more more thoroughly. And the dog is uh, getting trapped up in the. Okay, so you just saw why. You know, you gotta train a puppy. <laughs> She'll cut you off and everything, getting your camera on there. So, what was you saying? I said, uh, all we know there is a conference in January, but that's all we know. Um, that's all we heard. We saw a post from somebody else, and uh, other than this, we don't have any information on it at all. No. So. No, but uh, maybe those guys will get lucky. Maybe they'll get something interesting. I'm, you know, I always wish. Well, hopefully. I wish anybody be able to get anything, you know, decent. I don't, I don't wish against any, uh, any discouragement upon anybody of, of achieving things. Uh, more power to them. But uh, all I'm saying is, is that you got to be, you got to get out of the, uh, I don't know. You just got to get out of that mode of chasing monkeys down. There's a whole lot more to this than just that mindset. And it takes you it takes it takes some training, it takes years to transition from that that mindset. And the only way you will transition from that that way of thinking is 
to have personal experiences. And without those personal experiences, you'll, you'll forever be stuck there. All right, we'll rub it up. Yeah. See what they do? Eat dirt. Beautiful dog, though, man. Beautiful dog. Got to say that. There's fish jumping. Also, another footnote before we start reversing course and start backtracking a little bit. Um, I know I mentioned uh, in, in uh, when we was up in Blue Ridge, I know I mentioned that we were going to be interested in exploring other areas. So, we have already begun and we've already started the commitments of uh, heading out west. And we've already committed money to it. And... Uh, Give us some time. If I heal up okay, all goes well. Uh, we will be doing some filming in the high Sierras. Mm-hmm. Man. This is going to be more of an exploratory. Checking out the area, scouting out the area. Um, we'll see how it all goes. I'll figure out all what I want to do with it. And then I will probably end up returning with some invited people to come along if they want to come and we're going to be we're going to be rucking it out there in the wilderness and doing that uh, that 40 mile that 40 mile loop out there and you know that's what my hunch is is to do something like that set up in camps you know and just keep moving and keep moving and that way you 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 enjoy the big footing while you're out there, but you know you're out there living it and you're out there just experiencing, you know, elevations and all the rest of that good hunt, all that good happy stuff. So, not giving up on it, folks. It's gonna get interesting. All right, we'll go be heading on. So some of the gear we're gonna be looking into of getting is gonna be gear that's gonna be, uh, you know, more things. I need a. I need to purchase those um, those beacons. You know those beacons that when you go missing, uh, you know you just push the button. A, a rescue or something like that's what they're called. I need to be able to, or, or a satellite phone or something some sort like that, or a mixture of some, because when you're going out there and you're staying that far out, you know help is not going to come to you. So if something goes wrong, you need to be able to, you know, need to be able to be out of your mind, but push a button. If you got enough sense to yourself, push a button, and then, uh, you know, come what may. Uh, those things are three hundred and fifty-nine dollars a piece. So I'm looking into getting those things. So to uh, aid to the safety of these things. So taking Mr. Polite's uh, advice. breaking the general rule I'm letting be able to get way ahead of me. So slow down some. There they go. They're driving by. They must be staying. I'm on the McNeil side by the way. So uh, I'm just curious. Powder everywhere. On this, on this guy right here. Hi, man. They got big ones in in Hawaii. These little millipedes. They'll bite that dog crap out of you. We don't normally catch them that big in Florida. But uh, I hear more vehicles coming. Could be campers, just the same at McNeil. 
But um, we always have people that's they watch the videos and, and they always they always try to find a way to get close. But I uh, always seems I always seem to think that there's something in common when I think people are trying to follow where I go, and that is uh, there seems to be that not seems to be the same level of commitment if you want to get out here and have a personal experiences you need to be on your feet you need to be on your feet on your two feet I've been asked many a times what's what's the trick to it what's the best way of going about it so I'm like the best way of going about it guys is you got to be on your two feet yeah, the vehicle can get you there, but you need to be out there a lot of times and dismounted for the most part. I'm not saying you can't have an experience sitting in a vehicle, parked in a vehicle somewhere, because we all know that's happened. But, um, so, you know, that's just my, I wish them all luck. I wish them all luck. Y'all ever think about one of the most coveted things? I mean, when I started doing this stuff, y'all ever think about the one of the most coveted things that is like universal? The most coveted thing, the most universal thing that's widely accepted by both camps and the Bigfooting community. And that's the old dreaded knock. Oh, I heard a knock. Oh, I heard a knock. Oh, I heard a double knock. People get so excited about all that and hearing them and I, I am guilty myself, but if you really think about it, you really think about it. Has any one of us ever heard or seen eyes on when the knock is made? No. Okay? But yet you'll hear it over and over and over again. You'll hear this over and over and over again. Oh, we were surrounded by knocks. Okay, I'm not disputing that at all. But be truthful. How close were the knocks that you heard, but yet you didn't see anything? That's the ticket. That's the key part. Being able to hear the knocks so close, at a, such a close range, and you don't see anything. Okay? I beg to differ with that, but if there was a big eight foot nine foot hairy ape man that was just right over there where my brain tells me that it came from you know our, our brain has like three-dimensional hearing we can you know we can gauge the distance and you don't see anything don't see anything at all why is that they don't want to tell you that they don't want to stand on a podium and tell you why is that they just want to say, well, that's just how, that's how primates are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's primate, all right. Just want to have my personal thought on that one. In the world of training pointers, but she's homing right now. I'm just going to call it homing. She knows the way back already. She's pulling. And she knows the way back. Because that's she's probably obviously smelling her own scent, I guess, and uh, she will, she will pull you back to where you started from. It's really cool watching these watching these types of dogs. These are straight up hunting dogs. Is that it right there? Yep. yep. Why would anybody leave gear behind? Why would anybody leave gear behind? I know. I know you want to walk it out there. That's why. No, there's a. No, it's maybe hand, some. Maybe some someone's water. just. Oh, I see vehicle tracks going out there though. Yeah. See that right there? I see vehicle tracks going out there also. So maybe uh, maybe someone's legitimately trying to camp. I, I have my suspicions, but. Um, fuel in the whole nine yards, well, or water, I guess. But uh, maybe someone's just pre-staging a campsite. I don't know. I know, but. Out there, there is a campsite way out there, and this baby don't want to hike it all in. But I wouldn't leave my equipment on the side of a, of a road that you know, has people 
going on it. This roadway is uh, controlled by permit. It's locked. You can't just get on this roadway unless you have a, a uh, reservation to stay out here and it's permitted. And then when you get the permit, then you're able to uh, get the gate code. It's a combination lock on it. So the guys come zipping by. They came zipping by. I think you can probably maybe see me and get adjust right here. Hang on. Where's the roadway? They came zipping back by. So I think they're going to come back and my point is is that if you really want to piss me off okay if you really want to piss me off and cause me to look at you like you've lost your daggone mind is come driving by this roadway come driving by this roadway at full blast speed and not even yield and slow down at all knowing that we have a dog out here with us that pisses me off when that stuff when people to do stuff like that is flying right by you you know? Somebody's tired. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Let's. Was that her? In the yawning. It was in the yawning. <laughs>